Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's create a clock timer that we can use as a video overlay in iMovie projects. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 750 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So sometimes you need a clock in iMovie. Something that's either counting up or counting down to be an overlay in your video. We're going to create something in Keynote that can act as a clock counting off each second and make it reusable so we can use it in different situations over and over again. So we're going to start in Keynote and we're going to go and create a presentation using the basic black theme. Now here we're going to add a new slide and we're going to choose a slide where we could just put a big number in the middle of the screen. A good one for this is the statement slide in the theme. So now we just have text in the middle and I can click on it and then let's put in something like 2 minutes just to get an idea of what it will look like. Now this is pretty small. We want it to fill the entire thing. Even if we want it small inside of iMovie we want to make it as large as possible here in Keynote because we can shrink it in iMovie very easily. So I don't just want to change this text here. I want to change how it is in the theme. So when we create new slides using the statement slide we get the same font. So let's go to View Edit Master Slides and then we're going to select Statement here. It's already selected because that's the template used by our current slide. It just has this one text box in the middle. Don't worry about what it looks like in here. We just want to change the font. So let's go to Format, Text and first let's pick a better font. You could choose whatever you want. I'm going to choose Menlo. It's a nice mono spaced font. Numbers look good in it I think. And I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to make it much much bigger. So let's go to say a thousand point. And then I'm going to increase the space here for this text box. And once I do I'm going to recenter it. Now let's exit the master slides mode here. And now we can see it has changed this. So now we have a nice big time in the middle of the slide. Now like I said you could use any font, any size you want. You can also even use a different color. But I like using white and we'll be able to make some. But I like using white here as the overlay. The black background we're going to get rid of. But first we need to create a slide for every second that goes by. So we want to start here with say 0 and then we want to add a new slide using statement and then this one will be 1 and then we can continue to do that. It's easier if you select the slide here and do command D. That's edit duplicate selection and now we can go in and just make a change here. And you can actually do command D just a bunch of times to create the different ones. Go to each one and make a change. This actually won't take that long. Give yourself 15-20 minutes and you'll be able to go up to 2 minutes or 3 minutes or however much you want. But I'm going to use a script to do it because I'm lazy. So let's select all of these and I'm going to delete them so clear out the presentation. Don't worry about the default slide here that's stuck. We'll just delete that at the end. And I'm going to switch to Script Editor. Script Editor is an app that comes with your Mac so you've got it. And I'm going to go into Script Editor and create a new document. Now if you don't like scripting and don't know programming at all don't worry. I'm going to give the entire script to you. It's a pretty simple script. I'll explain what it does. But you can just copy and paste if you want. The important thing I need to do first though is change from Apple Script to JavaScript. If you don't do that this won't work. Now I'm going to paste the script in. So you can see it's not really that many lines. The first three lines just set three variables. It sets the variable Keynote to the application Keynote so we can refer to the application. It sets the variable Presentation to the current document. So make sure you have Keynote open with just this one document ready to go. Then we're going to set Slide Master equal to the template slide named Statement. Then we're going to loop and we're going to start with 0 and go to 120. That's 2 minutes of time in seconds. We're going to get the number of minutes and put it in M so that's just the number of seconds divided by 60 rounded down. Floor means round down. Then we're going to get the number of seconds left over by taking the total number of seconds and subtracting however many minutes there are times 60. Then we create a new slide and you can see here we're using that slide master. So referring to the statement slide. We're going to push that onto the presentation. And then we're going to set the body text which is this here to minutes and then a colon and then seconds but we're going to surround it with all of this basically just to pad it with zeros. So 3 is zero 03 instead of just 3. Now let's move this over here and we can see the presentation underneath. When I run it you'll see it add these 
120, actually 121 slides since it starts from 0 and goes to 120. You can see it added all. That's a lot faster than doing it manually. Now we can see each time in each slot. We can go back to the beginning. We can see we've got that slide here at the beginning. We just delete that, the delete key. So now we're starting to get 0, going to 120 or 2 minutes. Now the next part is very important. You want to select a slide here like the first one and do Command A to select all. So all slides are selected. Then go to Format and under Format make sure you see Slide Layout and change the background color to No Fill. This should set the background color of all the slides to nothing. So if I select Slide 3 and I look Format, Slide Layout, Background is No Fill. I select Slide 6. It's also No Fill. If all the slides aren't set to No Fill then this won't work. Now let's export. I'm going to do Export to Movie. Now I'm going to select Self Playing. I'm going to do All Slides and I'm going to go to the next slide after exactly one second. So Every slide will be there for one second. I'm going to change the resolution to Custom and then go to 1920 by 1080 which is typical for iMovie videos. Then we need to switch to Apple ProRes 4444 and make sure Export with Transparent Backgrounds is checked. If this isn't checked or it's grayed out then you haven't set all the slides to No Fill or you forgot to go to Apple ProRes. And if this isn't transparent well this isn't going to work very well. Now we'll go to Next and we'll export this out as a video. I'll call it Timer and I'll export out all the slides so we have a video we can use in iMovie. Now I can look here on the Desktop and here's the Timer Movie. I can double click on it to open it up in QuickTime Player and I can see 2 minutes and 2 seconds long which makes sense because remember we have 0 and 2 minutes. So it's actually 2 minutes and 1 second long and there's a little tiny bit extra at the end of a Keynote export and it's going to round it up so it's 2 minutes and 2 seconds. Every slide is still just exactly 1 second we can scrub through here. So now we're ready to go. So now here's my iMovie project. I just have some sample video in here. Chances are if you have a clock on the screen it's probably going to be you talking about something, counting down to a time or something like that. I'm going to bring this video in and I'm going to add it to the top here. So it's going to be a overlay to the existing video. And I'm going to select it and make sure I go here to the Video Overlay Settings and then I'm going to change it to Picture and Picture. And now here you could see the timer is right here. I can move it around to wherever I want. So I can put it here at the bottom right. I can stretch it make it as large or as small as I want. And you can see here it's going to count the seconds. If I wanted to get rid of something like maybe the zero second I could always trim the beginning of the video. So I could start at 1. I could also easily reverse this by clicking on the speed control here. Clicking Reverse. And now I get something that starts at 2 and counts down. The picture on picture thing here automatically has a dissolve here for 5 seconds. I can take that away and go to 0 seconds. So now it just appears there and now it's counting down. And I could put that wherever I want. I could even play with the color. This is why I made this white. I can go here to Colors and I could grab this end here, bring it down and then change the tint. Maybe make it blue or yellow. If I really wanted a specific color I could go back here in Keynote, go to View, Edit Master Slides, edit this statement here to change the color for this template slide. So let's go and change it to a red. And now when I exit Master Slides you can see all of the numbers are red. And I could export this again. I could also go and add a shadow to this. So I can select here under Style. I could go to Shadow and I can create a drop shadow for it. It's hard to see here because it's on a black background. Now if you really want to get creative you can try adding transitions between each slide. Just select all the slides in the Keynote presentation add a transition. You have to have a minimum time for a transition so if you set the transition for 1 second and then you also have 1 second between slides you end up with a video overlay that's twice as long as it needs to be. So 2 minutes would actually be 4 minutes. So you want to change the speed of that video and make it 200% fast. That way it takes your 4 minutes to count down from 2 minutes and compresses it back down to 2 minutes. You can do all sorts of other things too like for instance the last 10 seconds you could change the color, make them red, make the font get bigger, all sorts of things like that. The sky's the limit for what you want to do. Once you have that keynote presentation you can really customize it as you like. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. 
Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.